I had a letter from one of my fans the other day, and her name is Agatha Jankowski from Cologne in Germany. Now, she wrote me a very long email saying how she enjoyed my videos, but she wanted me to do a video specially on using small maples. Sorry if I keep showing these big maples like that. Look at that great big beast with that big trunk. Uh, by the way, it's about to shed its leaves. So most of my maples seem to be big maples. Let me show you the other one that I did with a crowbar. That's another big one. So I don't know whether these big maples put people off because they can't aspire to these big things. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you what we can do with young maples. And because we actually grow our own maples, I will show you what we do with the young ones. So come with so me. So I'm here and today happens to be the 30th of October, almost into November. And it's pretty cold now. And suddenly all the maples have started turning color. So all these lovely maples, look at them. They're all starting to turn color. These are atros, the red ones, grown from seed. And they're about three years old or four years old. So I'm going to pull a few of these out and show you we can do, not only can we use it for making forest groups, but we will use it for making some other things as well. So these are just the red ones, but I'll show you in our growing fields how we can do other maples as well. While I'm walking out to the field, I'll just show you the maples that are growing in the ground. While the maples in pots as bonsai have virtually lost all their leaves, the trees that are growing in the ground are only just starting to turn. Look at the lovely color. And they're going to turn flame red in another few days. So the color has yet to come. So we've had a lot of rain, but suddenly the sun has come out. And this is the pine that I pruned. So we have a mixture of maples and pines. While we're passing by, this is also a very interesting maple. This is the red Shigitatsu Sawa. So we call it the red lace leaf. You can only just about see the veining here. So this is called the red lace leaf. Beautiful, beautiful tree. And let's now walk to the field and I will show you our young maples that we have there. Come with me. Let's keep the video running. Even cherry trees, they turned lovely red uh, foliage in the autumn. And just to take advantage of the good weather we've had, we're going to have a few hours of sunshine. Those are the Zelkova serrata, Japanese grey bark elm. Sometimes they turn a nice orange color, but this year the leaves are beginning to fall and the color hasn't even turned uh, orange. It's yellow and then it turns brown and the leaves drop. So just to show you the progression of the trees, this was a green dissectum only two days ago. It was brilliant red and all the leaves have fallen. This has shed all the leaves. This red dissectum has still got the leaves on. And so it goes on. I will now show you another area where we have our maple seedlings. We grow lots of maples and have a look at all this. Look at all these. These are green maples. Again, grown from seed, and this is what we have here. And I will take one of these trays into the back greenhouse and show you what we can do with them. But meanwhile, let me show you some other maples that we grow progressively bigger. If we just creep into here. These are maples all in different stages of being made. These are deshojos grown from small, kept in pots, and then they get bigger. And then let me take you to another area where we have some smaller maples, just to show that we don't just grow big trees.
But what a pity, a lot of these maples have lost their leaves, so I can't really show you how we are developing these. So these are just young maples, same as the ones I showed you in the trays. They would have been more than a meter tall, say about 1.5, that means five or six feet tall. And I chop them so that I get branching. So although they may be tall trees, we don't let them grow tall. We keep chopping it, like this one, I chopped it there, and the side should grow up. So that's what we do with them. So if you want a small maple, you can just chop it however hard you wish, and you will get the small tree with a lovely thick trunk. So this is how we keep our maple small. That means we sacrifice five or six feet just for a few inches. So that generally is the approach to making a small maple. This, by the way, is the famous Osaka Zuki. Look at that beautiful maple. So I can't see how anyone cannot love maples. They're such a beautiful tree. All these maples which are red are just ordinary mountain maple. And in the autumn, they just turn this stunning red color. Absolutely stunning color. You will notice that we have a few air layerings that we then separate. We either didn't have time to look and examine them, but I can assure you uh, they will be all right. Even if they have rooted, we won't bother to separate them now, but we'll keep it for next year and we will separate the trees next year. So let's go to another maple area. You see how many maples we have here. Follow me. And this is another area of maples. Again, these are the tall maples that we grow, but instead of letting them get too tall, like this one's got a twin trunk. So this was chopped in the spring. So all this grew since I would say May. So I've got another 60, 70 centimeter growth in just, I would say four months. So that's been chopped and grown again. I'll show you what I will do with these ones. So again, just see these tall trees are constantly chopped back to get branching. So I hope this is going to give you some encouragement and ideas. I will take some of these in and we will show you how we de develop nice small maples from small plants. So okay. let me give you a few pointers or tips as to how to go about using young maple saplings. We, these are saplings or seedlings. Huh? So this one would be, I would say, three going on four years old. So this was cut here once, and then that was one year, that's two years, and this is the third year has grown that much. Now, if I want to keep it short, it may seem brutal, but I would cut it there. I wouldn't let it grow that tall. So that could be uh, used for making a forest group. I know that maples are not often wired because uh, we usually just train maples by simply trimming them and you'll get very nice shape. Let me find a suitable piece of wire to show you what we do with these. If we wanted to shape this into an S shape, because we do have maples that are shaped in that way, I will show you what we do. So while they are this thickness, about three years old and no more than a biro or a pencil thick, you can still bend it, but you have to be very, very careful. In fact, if you bend it when they are thinner than this, you will stand a better chance of getting a nicer S and reduce the risk of breaking it. Because maples, as I said, are quite brittle trees. They don't like to be wired. So I don't even wire it tight. So again, do the proverbial S shape, which is a coil. So you can see they are bendable at this age. So what I've used here is, I think, three mil wire. You can use even two and a half, depending on how thick or how stiff it is. So you can get the S shape like so. So that is the start of S. Just plant it in a bigger pot and let it grow. 
Now let me just show you, stay here, I will just show you some of the maples that are trained in that style. And we have quite a few here. So this is a one S-shaped tree. Now this must be at least 10 years or more. So these would have been trained when they were very, very thin, maybe about that thin, and made into that very, very tight S. See, even at this stage, the trunks are not really that bendable. So that is how you make trees like that with the S. So they are wireable, and you can create that S shape with that. If you didn't decide to wire it, simply keeping the tree straight, keep cutting it, and look how nice it is, because it will throw branches. And this maple has had absolutely no wiring done to it at all. Let me just find a little bonsai pot, because until it's in a bonsai pot, you don't realize how um, nice it does look. Even if I didn't use a proper pot, this is just a plastic bonsai training pot. See, that would look quite nice like that. You can even get it into a pot like this. But if you want to grow the trunk thicker, then don't rush to put it in a small pot. Next year, put it into a slightly larger pot than this, and the trunk will thicken much more. So can you see this one? was put in this pot this year, but this was put in a larger pot. You can see why I put it into that, because by putting it into that pot, I will get a much larger tree. Now, the question is, do I start giving more training, more shape at this stage, or let it grow? So again, you can have all sorts of choices and options. If I just trim it like that, I get like a twin trunk tree let it develop. If I wanted to make it shorter, I can cut it here and keep the tree even shorter than that. So that's another possibility. So the choice is yours. But I will grow it a bit bigger because I want this trunk to thicken and get a slightly bigger tree. Now this is a quite tricky one here. And without wiring, you see this one has produced a nice bend here. So that has come about without any wiring. So what can I do here? I can just do this, remove that branch. So I got a nice S there. And I can keep it like that, keep it like that. And then next year, I will have a tree with that sort of shape. So that is the future direction. I'm not going to pot it on, because this pot was uh, the bigger pot only from this year, so it's got another year more to grow, and the trunk will thicken, and I'll get more branches. So that's how I dealt with that one. So you can see, with these young trees, there are so many options, endless options. So this is like a two-liter pot, and this one again, doing funny things. See, it's again produced the kink there. So rather than keep a small tree, I have two choices here. If I wanted to make a broom style tree, I keep the straight trunk and let all these little shoots grow like so and get a tree like that. But if I want to utilize the lovely bend which has made itself in a way, I will cut that off so I get a lovely kink over there. And so that tree is going to have a lovely bend there. So this is the future direction of this tree. And then as the tree produces more branches, just cut these side shoots off, and you will get more ramification, more branches. So I won't show you how to make a forest, because you've seen this done many, many times. The other things you can do with these, apart from wiring it into an S, is to make the proverbial clump style. Now. I know that this is autumn, or entering into what we call the dormancy period, and you can tinker with the roots quite a bit. Don't forget, if you don't have protection of a greenhouse like we have here, 
it is better to wait till spring, but because I have the protection facility, if you have an unheated greenhouse, you can do all this thing uh, now, because the protection through the winter will enable the tree to come through very strongly in the following spring, so you don't have to worry about doing this. So you can, again, tie this very close together. Can you see? I've now made a twin trunk tree like this. But I noticed that the autumn colors are different, like this one is yellow, this one is red. You may get one part of the tree red and one part of the tree green, but so what? Okay, so we keep it like that. You can just squash it together, but I usually prefer to tie it with a piece of wire, but I will keep a close eye on the wire because I don't want the wire to bite into the trunk uh, as it grows, so it would be better to put it on now, and in the middle of the summer, I will release the wire or loosen the wire. So I've got a tree like that, joined together, and they'll fuse together to make a twin trunk tree. Now, if you take more than that, I remember telling you in one of my other videos, there is a guy in Japan I used to buy trees from, and I think his name was called Ishiguru. And he was a great one for making clump-style bonsai. I still have some of his clump-style trees. And I think he was a Kawasaki grower. And he used to make these clump-style trees simply by putting young seedlings close together, three and five together to make clump-style. So you can make clump-style trees just by doing this. So that's a three clump. So you can keep adding more and more to it. So these are just simple ideas. So how simple is that, you know? But this is the best time to admire the maples. Look at the beautiful colors. We came across one while we were in the field, one of these unusual ones. Because we saw our own maples from seed, you can never tell how they turn out. Compare the leaf of this one with this one. They're both maples, but look at this. It's so small and fine, and the autumn color is different. And this is where you get so much diversity in the range of uh, maple species. So this I will treasure. I brought it in because I want to put a label on it to make out that this is a small leaf yellow one so that it doesn't get lost with the, with the other ones. And of course, making a forest is simple. Well, <clears throat> for good measure, let me do it while I have it here, use up some time because I don't want to rob you of useful time. So let us make a maple forest with these red trees. Let me reinforce the learning process by showing the entire process. Whenever I make a forest, I always like to tie the trees in, because if you tie the trees in, there is less danger of them falling out of the pot or birds pecking it out and pulling them out. So. I'll, I'll make a group of nine trees. If I make a group of nine trees, I only need two tying wires. And I hope I have nine trees. If not, I'll bring a few more in. These plastic pots are very nice. You don't have to put any mesh because the drainage holes are pretty small. I will leave that twin trunk there because I will plant that separately. Now let's see how many trees we've got here. They're all fairly similar thickness. I will trim the height as I go along. The secret of making an interesting group is not to put them in a straight line. Just put them, not haphazardly, but randomly, so that we get the large ones in the front and small ones splaying out at the side. So how many have we got here? Three, seven. I've always said that the number of trees don't really matter in a group. More than seven, you can't really tell whether it is seven or eight. Uh, so you can either make them all straight, or I sometimes prefer to let them splay out. That means let them fan out in the shape of a fan. That looks quite nice. 
And if you want to make the trees come closer together, just remove some of the root ball and plant them tight. So between now and February and March, you can tease the roots quite a bit. So it gives you more opportunity to get more trees in, get them really tight. Can you imagine if you were to bare root these trees, you can get them really tight. So in a pot this size, this already seven trees. We said I can easily get 13 trees. If you just turn the camera off, I'll just bring a few more trees. So I'm just going to keep adding more and more trees, not at random, but so that we will stop when we feel there is enough material there. I try to make the trees not cross each other. Now this one has got a fork there. I will reduce one of them so that it doesn't look as if it's forked. And then I will put it this way so that it looks like one tree rather than uh, a twin trunk tree. Always easier if you can break the root ball up. This is a pretty thin one, so sometimes the thin scrawny ones can go at the side or at the back. So I don't know whether this is enough or not, but I can more or less tell that I'm reaching the limit. That little one, I may have to shorten that one because it's not standing up on its own. So let me just give it a light trim. We don't need them that tall. By trimming them down, I'm going to encourage the side shoots to grow next year. And when they produce side shoots, I will keep the side sh shoots uh, short rather than keep them too long. Look at the lovely form of these leaves. Beautiful. Look at this. Shame to cut them off. So this tree, or this group, I mean this planting, the leaves are beginning to fall as I work on them. Already looking full. And you notice I haven't counted any of the trees at all. So for those purists who say that you've got to have the odd and even numbers, I haven't even considered for a moment whether I'm putting nine trees or eight trees or whatever. Let's see how many there are. There's three, four, four and two is six. 6 and 3, 9. 9 and 3 is 12. Now, just because there are 12 trees, does it look bad? It doesn't look bad. Well, 13 trees, if you don't believe in the number 13 being unlucky, we can put 13 there. Uh, or if you feel it is unlucky, we can take one out. But I'm not a superstitious person, so I will use 13.
and you may wonder by cramping it like this, does it harm the trees? No, they don't. They just mesh. The roots will just mesh. What may happen is that if you get some stronger trees, they may overwhelm the weaker ones, and you may sometimes get the weaker ones dying. So this basically is what you do to make a forest. Just put together a group of trees, have it in a roughly conical shape, and uh, arrange it how you like, some close together, some far apart. And that is the making of a group. So with these young maples, I hope I've satisfied my dear uh, friend Agatha Jankowski, and I hope she will be inspired to make bonsai from young maples. So this is a short lesson on using young maple trees for bonsai.